It's not often that you wake up on New Year's Day with a message from Justin Wong to accompany your hangover, but here we are, and here's what he said. I've been trying to find this code in Arcade Alpha 3, where you can select a secret ism bar, and if you select green, your normal grab will do 90% damage. I remember people doing this to me in my arcade in the early 2000s, but when I use some of the different versions of Alpha 3 on emulation, I can never figure out how to activate the code. But I remember it clearly, since I used this special Kareen before in the arcade. Couldn't find any video footage on YouTube or Google searches. Even the Street Fighter fandom page doesn't talk about it. I remember you have to hold certain buttons after putting your quarter in before hitting start. So with that, let's go find Karen's glitch grab. grab. Before we even get to the codes Justin is talking about, we've got work to do, and it's before the game has even started. It's related to this, the title screen, and more specifically, the background colour. This background changes colour depending upon how long you've left the game on. It goes from cream, to red, to green, to purple, and ends on blue after 5 hours of continuous play. However, we're able to skip this timer and it's done with a totally different set of codes. What we need to do is access this game's test menu and within this, we're able to enter button sequences that change the color. Let's say we're trying to go from the first color cream to the second color red. We'll need to go into the submenu input test and once inside, input the buttons for a raging demon, followed by start and light punch. If successful, the game will pop up with a message saying, here comes a new challenger, and that unlocks Balrog, Julie, and Juni. Each level of time skip requires a new code within a different submenu, some of which require both players to input things, so good luck if you're on a head-to-head -head cabinet. Also, these codes have to be done one after another. You can't just go from cream to purple. You need to do your first one, go into the character select, reset the game, and then do the next one. But what's the point? Why are we doing this? Alpha 3's console releases are notable in part due to all the extra content they offer. World tour, custom isms, and all manner of weird single player goodness. But what's less known is that the arcade release also featured major gameplay altering modes, four in particular that we're gonna be looking at today. All of these modes are time gated, only accessible once that title screen has changed. The first three of these modes aren't important to Justin's story, but I think they're kind of sick, so we're gonna talk about them anyway. Let's start with the one you've probably heard of, Dynamic Battle. This is Street Fighter's co-op mode. Selected by holding down all three kicks and pressing start when you enter your coins, you and the person on player two are able to play at the same time, fighting the CPU. It's impossibly broken, but it is also kind of cool to battle your way through the game's bosses with a friend. It's also incredibly forward thinking from a title that was released in 1998. It's a very easy mode to miss if you're playing on arcade, but a single player does kind of hint towards it as some of the characters will actually fight against both Junie and Julie at the same time. It was also possible in the original Street Fighter Alpha 1, but there you could only fight as Ryu and Ken versus Bison, which, although limited, is pretty sick for plot reasons if you're into that kind of thing. The other mode we have, which is far more pertinent to our competitive experience, despite it often being banned, is Classic Mode. Classic mode is basically Xism Plus, so essentially Street Fighter 2 in Alpha 3. Done by holding hard punch and hard kick on the title screen, then pressing start, classic mode removes both your biggest strength in this game, the super bar, and your biggest weakness, the guard bar, giving you exactly what it says on the tin, a classic experience. Most things match Xism. Characters moves, outfits, and 1.2 times damage increase are all the same, but there are some differences. Obviously, no guard bar means you can't be guard broken. The lack of super means no supers, of course. But the somewhat hard to notice change is how air recovery works. In Alpha 3, when you're hit and airborne, after the hit stun, you'll be able to tech out. And you can do this forward, backwards, or neutral, depending upon your directional input. After this tech, you're basically a normal airborne character. You can block, be hit, and even press buttons of your own. It's actually a pretty huge part of the game as a whole. In classic mode, you have this same hittable period, but it's shorter. 
and after you won't be able to tech in a traditional sense. Instead, you'll become invulnerable and hit the ground. It's actually pretty similar to Third Strike and most other old Street Fighter games where juggles are a thing. It doesn't make you immune from all the powerful combo potential in the game, but it does cause a few common BNBs to stop working. Akuma's classic Tatsu into DP straight up whiffs against classic mode, which is pretty important. On top of that, some of your normal Vism combos just won't work anymore, and you'll have to find alternative routes. Funnily enough, classic characters existed in Alpha 2, but they were more specifically Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition versions of themselves. Done by another code on the character select screen, Zangief and Dalsim all have selectable classic versions which no longer have access to their super bar, meaning no alpha counters, no custom combos, and of course, no supers. On top of that, a lot of their moves have either been removed or altered to match their CE appearance. I would say one of the most interesting characters in this mode is Zangief. He has no whiff animation on his SPD, making for incredibly powerful mix-ups if he actually ever gets in. Next we have Mazzy mode, done by holding medium punch and medium kick then pressing start. I personally think of this as extreme mode, as the entire game is amped up to 100. Your damage, it's increased. The damage you take, also increased. You can still select whatever ism you want, but regardless, everything is going to hurt, especially if you select Xism with the 1.2 times damage bonus. Even more crazy is the fact your opponent no longer needs to win two rounds to take a game. It's reduced down to one for them, but remains two for you. Shockingly, the effects of this mode are doubled if you both select it. There's actually some pretty sick Mazzy only tournaments in Japan, and it basically turns the game into a more complex dive kick, which is actually pretty fun. Outside of these features though, it works as intended. No glitched throws to be found here, but they still hit kind of hard. Lastly, and most importantly, we have the mode that Justin mentioned, Psycho mode, as in Dan's fighting style. Selected by holding light punch and light kick, then pressing start. This is basically handicap mode. It reduces your guard bar down to nearly nothing, meaning you'll get guard broken in just a couple of blocks. Your stun resistant is also tanked, meaning a few stray hits will dizzy you. The damage you take is also increased, and on top of all of that, you can no longer cancel normals into specials. So say goodbye to the Street Fighter Classic, crouch medium kick into fireball. With it selected, all we have to do is pick Karen and throw. Uh, yeah. This isn't some mythical hearsay from the 90s. It's real and it's busted. We're looking at anywhere from 90 to 99% damage, depending on who we do it to and if Exism is selected. But there is nuance here. That insane damage comes from the second hit, not the first. What's weird is that second hit will not kill, despite it taking Akuma from full health to just a pixel. You can see here I've put him down to 50%, and if I throw him, he's still left with that cheeky health point. Even if I get him down to near nothing, he still won't die. It's only when I get him to low enough that the first hit of the throw will kill that we win the round. You might be thinking to yourself, this is dumb, time to ruin someone's day on Firecade. But unfortunately, that won't be possible. I talk about it a lot here, but arcade releases of fighting games had updated versions, and Alpha 3 is no different. Karen's Broken Throw is only available on the earlier versions of this game. For this video, I'm specifically using the Japanese version 980629. The ones used for both Fightcade and the Street Fighter 30th Anniversary Collection are much later editions which are fixed and good to go. This is both great for competitive play and terrible for messing with your mates. Just to cover all bases, I tried throwing with every character using this mode, but was unable to find anything even remotely similar. It's possible that there is another version of the game where someone else has a glitched throw or move, but I'm yet to see it. You know, over the years, Capcom's business practice has been all over the place. Sometimes there's disc lock DLC or 20 Chun costumes that might require you to remortgage your home, but it is worth remembering that even in the arcade era, sometimes they're great. This game offers us these insane extra modes to 
play and experiment with. And if we're being honest, there aren't many other companies who would be willing to do the same. Big thanks to Jay Wong here and the general Alpha 3 community. It's always fun to learn a new piece of fighting game history. If you yourself ever think of something that's like this that you can't find, hit me up. I'm always down for breaking a game.